Hi guys, welcome to episode 18 of Sketch Support. In this video, I'm going to take a two page sketch and show you four layouts that I created all using that same sketch as the starting point. Sketches can be a useful tool for anyone from beginner to advanced and the possibilities of how you can use them are endless. If you are a beginner, you might follow the sketch exactly. And if you are more advanced, you might use just a few pieces of the sketch mixed with your own ideas. For me, sometimes my layout looks like the sketch. Sometimes it kind of looks like the sketch and sometimes it looks absolutely nothing like the sketch. There are zero rules or limits when using sketches. The sketch that I'm using in this video is free for you to download at scrapbookgeneration.com. It has all the measurements and placements for the important details on the sketch, so you can easily get all that information you need to help you put a layout together. And I'll link to it down below. There's also a three page PDF of 22 more sketch examples showing some of the many ways you can adapt this sketch. It's a really good visual for the changes you can make to help it better fit your needs, whether that's simplifying the design or changing the amount or maybe the size of photos. And there are even a few one page layout options. There's also a sketch support Facebook group that you can join. There are photo albums set up for each sketch where everyone can post their layouts. You can post yours or you can just come hang out and see what others have created. There are always a lot of really great ideas and unique interpretations of the sketches. And I'll link to that group down below as well. So let's go ahead and get this video going with a closer look at the new two page sketch. This two page sketch has six photos with five three by four inch photos going across the layout and one four by six inch photo. What I like about the pairing of the smaller photos with one larger photo is how that automatically turns this larger photo into a focal photo. This is where you want to put your favorite or a special photo of the bunch that you really want to stand out and highlight. Behind that four by six inch photo, there is a large heart background. I love designs with large shapes like this. It adds a fun element and you can easily customize it to different themes with different shapes. You could use a circle, a star, a hexagon, a large die cut would work well too, or you could simplify the design with just a simple square background. Then there's a large piece that goes all the way across the layout. This is another area that you can play around with. You can break it up into several pieces to include more papers or colors vertical strips, horizontal strips, squares, hexagons, or even a grid of small shapes like hearts, stars, flowers, or circles would look really interesting there. This sketch ended up being a favorite for sure. I really enjoyed using it and creating the layouts and I think you all will enjoy using it too. For my first layout, I stayed very close to the sketch. Really the only things I changed had to do with my photos. If this is your first time watching a sketch support video, the way I approach the sketch and my layouts is I have several photo boxes full of photos that are ready to go on a scrapbook page. I take the sketch that I'm going to use and pull out photos that I think will work with the sketch. I'm not always looking for photos that perfectly match the amount or size of photos on the sketch. Doing that takes a lot more time and effort because you're looking for something so specific. And really there's no need to do that when you can easily make adjustments here and there to make those photos work with that sketch. 
I have a sketch support behind the scenes video that I'll link to below that shows my process for picking out photos that way if you are interested in watching it. So for this layout, I had picked out a set of photos that had six three by five inch photos and one two and a half by two and a half inch photo. I used five of the three by five inch photos in place of the three by four inch photos on the sketch. Since both of those sizes have the same width of three inches, I was able to include the same amount of photos as you see on the sketch. The height of the photos that I used are only one inch taller than the photos on the sketch and that background piece is big enough that it allows for taller photos if you need without having to adjust or increase the size of that background. So this was a really easy substitution for those three by four inch photos. I also used a three by five inch photo in place of the four by six inch photo on the sketch. Because I was using a photo that is the same size as the other photos on the layout, this focal photo lost a little bit of its impact like you see on the sketch. It still works as a focal photo, it just wasn't as powerful. So to help it stand out a little more, I added a double mat to it. This gave it a nice eye-catching frame while also adding a little bit more size to that photo, helping to bring back some of that attention there. Photo mats can be a great way to help your photos work better with a sketch. If you have smaller photos that you need to work into a larger space, a mat not only helps you fill that space, it also helps bring more attention to your photos. The last change I made was adding an extra photo on the left page. I originally wasn't even planning on using the smaller photo, but there was plenty of space in that area, especially since I had used a smaller focal photo and these hearts could easily shift over a little to make more room here. Another little change I made was I moved the striped strips to the edge of the background piece. Since my photos were taller and covered an inch more of that background, I could kind of save half an inch by moving those strips from the edges of the photos to the edges of the background. The rest of the layout is almost exact to the sketch. I used hearts as my main embellishment. Most of them are cut out of pattern paper and then I added a stitched border to give a little detail and texture to them. I also used some chipboard hearts and little wooden hearts. Then to add a little extra detail to the embellishment clusters, I added some flower die cuts and word stickers. The last detail I added were some small splashes to go with the puddle stomping theme. I also used Nuvo Jewel Drops in Seabreeze to add a little droplet on each one. With this layout, I made some big changes and went kinda crazy with the birthday theme. Anytime I'm using a sketch multiple times and I see a large background piece, I'm always thinking of the different ways I can break that up into smaller pieces for a completely different look. My go-to ideas usually involve strips, squares, hexagons, or other smaller, more theme-specific shapes like hearts, stars, or flowers. There are so many ways you can take a large background and amp it up with more pieces and detail and colors and patterns, and you end up with a completely different look. For this layout, I went with vertical one inch strips and to take it even further, I decided to incorporate the theme of my layout into that background design by turning those strips into birthday candles. I love challenging myself by finding different ways to incorporate the theme of my layout into the design. And when I say that, I don't mean just using themed embellishments. I'm talking about taking a basic element in the sketch design, like a strip of paper, and turning it into a theme design, like a birthday candle. 
Turning vertical strips into candles is something I do quite often with birthday layouts. They are so easy to make and customize from big, like you see on my layout, to small accents or embellishments. The base design of my large candles is very simple. I used a one by eight inch vertical strip. Then I added a stitched line for the wick and a flame that I cut on my silhouette. If you don't have a die cutting machine to make flames, another option is to use stars or sequins for your flame. Anytime I have a background of lots of strips, I like to add stitching to it in some form. My usual go-to is just a simple stitched line or border. However, since I turned these strips into birthday candles, I decided to use stitching that enhanced that birthday candle by adding a border and slanted lines. This took a really long time from drawing the lines to piercing the holes and then the stitching. The stitching took especially long because I used colors that coordinate with the colors of the papers. So it was a lot of jumping around from this strip to this strip and then changing the color of thread and yeah it was a lot the drawing of the lines was definitely the easiest and fastest part even though it looks like it would be a lot to do and i'll show you really quick how i did that it's really helpful if you have an omnigrid ruler the clear surface the grid lines and the angled lines make this really easy First, I added the borders an eighth of an inch from the edges of each strip. Then I started in one corner and used the angled lines to help me start that first line at a 45 degree angle and drew my line. I decided to space my slanted lines a half inch apart. So to make the next slanted line, I lined up the half inch line with the first line I drew while making sure that my 45 degree angled line is lined up with the edge of the strips. You can see now how my ruler edge goes over the next strip as well. So I go ahead and draw the slanted line on the first strip as well as the line on the second strip. After you get a few slanted lines drawn, you don't have to worry about the 45 degree angled line because you can use the other slanted lines to help you line up everything correctly. Then you just continue to line up the half inch line on the ruler with the last drawn slanted line while making sure that your previously drawn lines line up with the lines on your ruler and draw lines across all strips that the ruler covers and then repeating this until you have all the lines on the strips. I think it sounds more complicated than it is. That's why I wanted to make sure and show you so you can see how easy it is. It's much easier to draw the lines on the strips all at once instead of sitting there and drawing the lines on each individual strip one at a time. The next big change I made was using a large number in place of the heart on the sketch. I mentioned earlier that I love designs with large shapes and I knew that at least one of the things I wanted to do was change that heart to a different shape or theme design. I went with gold glitter to match the gold 13 on the cake. When I was in the planning stages of this layout, I was conflicted on whether I wanted to create a large birthday cake or use a large number 13. I thought a cake would look so cool, but I obviously, as you can see, decided to go with the number. I was already planning so much detail for the background with the birthday candles, and I thought a cake might be a little too much. And to clarify my thoughts on that just a bit, I think this design would look really great with a big cake, but I know me and how my brain works. And I knew that if I built a large cake, I was going to want to add stitching to it. And I was already planning so much stitching with the candles. So I knew that the number was going to be a little more of a practical option for me. I would love to see someone do this candle design with a big cake because I think it would look really cool. So someone out there that is watching this, I'm challenging you to do it. And then you have to share it with me because I really wanna see it. 
with my photos. This time I was working with a set of five four by four inch photos. This time the height of my photos match the height of the three by four inch photos on the sketch, but the width meant that I couldn't use as many as you see on the sketch, but it all worked out because I had one less photo than the sketch. Now I did make a little change to the four by six inch focal photo. I cut the last four by four inch photo I had into a three by four inch photo and I moved it from the edge of the photos to the left edge of the layout. I had originally planned on placing this photo like it would be on the sketch, but I just really didn't like the way it covered the three. It made it a little harder to see clearly that it was three. It mostly looked like a three, but it was more of a delayed reaction to notice that it was a three. Like you look at it and say, is that a three? I think it's a three. Yeah, that's a three. And I just wanted it to be a definite, that's a big number 13. Moving that photo also gave me the space to add my journaling inside the bottom of the three without covering any of that number. To finish out the layout, I used some chipboard balloons, word stickers, and a few punched glitter stars that match the big 13. This layout ended up being the most fun I had with this sketch. I can't even begin to describe how much I enjoyed creating this. It's got waves, it's splashes, and a sunburst, and this large heart all combined into one design. And it's kind of like an explosion of all of my favorite things on one layout. I love taking water photos and they are my favorite to scrapbook as well. The second I decided to use these photos, I knew I wanted to create a fun water sunshiny scene with that background design. I thought it would be a good complement to my photos. To do that, I started with creating a sunburst background that covers the same area as the background on the sketch. Creating sunbursts are much easier than they might look, and this was especially easy for the left page because I only used one pattern paper for the whole design, and the large heart is covering my meeting point. So you might ask, why does that make this easier? It makes it easier because I don't have to cut out each individual strip into separate pieces. I can keep the center of that paper intact by not cutting all the way to the center meeting point of the strips. This way I can adhere the strips as one whole piece and the center point is covered by the large heart so you don't see that it's uncut in the center. The right page, I couldn't do that since the meeting point of the strips is on the left page. So it's a little more complicated for this side. I'll show you really quick how to do both the left page sunburst and then how to continue the sunburst on the right page. First, you'll need two sheets of the same paper that you want to use for your background. Cut both papers to 12 by 8 inch, which is the size of the background pieces for both pages. For your left side sunburst, first you'll make a pencil mark where you want the meeting point to be. Mine is pretty much in the center. Then you will make a pencil mark on the four edges of the paper in the width that you want your strips to be. I wanted mine to be one inch, so I made a mark every one inch. A little side note, for this specific design, you do need to make sure that you end up with an even number of strips because we are cutting out every other one. If you have an odd number, you'll end up with an unequal amount of openings and strips. So make sure that you are selecting a width measurement that gives you an even number of sections. Then I used my ruler to draw a line from each pencil mark on the outer edge to that meeting point in the middle. When all of the pencil lines are complete, you can start cutting out every other strip. Since a large portion of this sunburst is going to be covered with a large heart, you don't have to cut all the way to the meeting point. This way you can keep that whole sunburst intact and it's much easier to adhere and position on your layout. For the right page sunburst strips, you will line up the right 
edge of the left page sunburst with the left edge of the 12 by 8 inch piece you cut for the right page. Make sure that the top and bottom are perfectly lined up. Now carefully place a ruler so that it lines up with the edge of the first left page sunburst strip and overlaps onto the full sheet for the right page. You'll want to carefully trace the line across the full sheet, trying not to move the ruler or shift the papers. Now you will repeat this for the other strips. It does get a little more difficult when you get to the strips that stretch all the way to the right edge. You need to have your ruler lined up with enough of the left page strip to get the angle correct, but you also need the length to get across the whole page. So you have two options. The first is to draw the line as far as you can and then move your ruler to realign with the pencil line. The second is to use two rulers or another straight edged guide to do it all at once. After you have the lines drawn, you can cut those strips out and adhere them so that they line up with the sunburst strips on the left page. If you enjoy creating sunburst designs, I've got a video that has a pretty thorough tutorial on how to create all kinds of sunbursts and different ways to customize them. I'll link to it down below if you want to check it out. It's also got a lot of layouts that I created with sunburst designs. To finish the sunburst design for the background, I added stitching to fill in the gaps between the yellow pattern paper strips. The sunburst design helped me accomplish that sunny day scene I was looking for, but I also wanted to work in some fun water designs as well. And if you know me, you know I love finding different ways to create wave and splash designs. I used my silhouette to cut out the wave strip on the left page and then I designed a matching wave so that I could extend this across both pages. I added a hand stitched border along the edge of it to add some texture and help me define the edge of that wave and really make the design stand out. I also adhered it with foam adhesive to give it the dimension of splashing water. I also added in several die cut splashes throughout the waves. This water droplet is probably the cut file I use the most for water pages. I love these droplets and how you can group them together and use a wide range of sizes to create unique splash designs. And I'll link to it down below if you're interested. It's definitely my go-to for water layouts. I added stitching to the larger droplets and then embellished them with word and phrase stickers and some puffy hearts. Then to add a little more detail to that wave and splash design, I used Nouveau Jewel Drops in Seabreeze to add some little droplets. This is another go-to product that I use on almost every water layout. It looks just like water and it's fun to create those little droplets with it and I'll link to that one too if you want to grab it. Another big change I made for this layout was combining the focal photo and that large heart. Occasionally when I come across a photo that I really really love, one that really speaks to me as a great photo. I'll have it printed as an 8x10. And I don't do this often, but sometimes you just come across a special photo that you know you want to do something big with, and this photo was definitely one of those for me. Since my photo was an 8x10, it wasn't quite large enough to be the same size as the heart on my sketch, but I added a double mat to it to help get it a little closer to the same size. Plus that really made that heart shape stand out and bring even more attention to that photo. Another fun idea for the heart, if you wanna do a design like this, but you don't have a larger photo, would be to create a large heart-shaped photo collage. To do that, you could cut a heart out of cardstock to use as your base and then adhere your photos on top of that and then you would cut off the excess part of the photos that is hanging off the edges. That would be a really cool way to kind of mimic this design. For the rest of my photos, I used the same amount and size that you see on the sketch, but I arranged them a little differently. I decided to tilt and overlap them instead of aligning them side by side straight across the layout. 
I thought this was a simple way to add a more whimsical and fun look to the layout. I also moved these photos down just a little. I liked the way they aligned with the heart and the waves better this way. I also moved the title above the three by four inch photos instead of placing it below like it is on the sketch. I didn't want the title to cover up too much of that wave design. Plus I really liked the look of just having the splashes along the wave strip. There was plenty of space to add the title above the photos, especially since I had moved the photos down a little. To complete the scene, I also added a sun and some small clouds around my title. For the last layout of sketch support, it's always about showing how the size of the sketch doesn't have to determine the size of the layout. You can always adjust and remove or shrink or stretch designs to work with a different size of layout. In the case of this layout, I've used the two page sketch to create a one page layout. Typically, there are four ways you can convert a two page sketch to work on a one page layout. Use the left page, use the right page, use the whole design and condense it down to fit, or use a combination of a few elements from both pages. I used the fourth one for my layout, combining a few elements from both pages. I used the photo arrangement from both pages, the title and journaling details and placement, and the large heart from the left page. I knew in the early planning stages with this sketch that one of the shapes I wanted to possibly use in place of that heart was a star. Being the mom of boys, stars are a shape that I turn to often. Plus, I just really like working with stars, and I think I always have. They're just a good generic shape that goes with a lot of themes. To create this design, I used two different star pieces layered together. The first one is cut from the triangle pattern paper, and it's quite a bit larger than the heart on the sketch. I cut it on my silhouette so that it's tilted, and it stretches off three edges of the layout. The second star piece is a layered star frame that I also cut from my silhouette. For this one, I used black cardstock and cut it slightly smaller than the larger pattern paper star. I thought that black would be a good complement to the colors of the pattern paper and would also really stand out. I liked that it added a bold frame, helping bring attention to all the details in the middle. Since I was creating a one page layout, I condensed the photos down to one three by five inch photo in place of the four by six inch photo and two two and a half by two and a half inch photos in place of the three by four inch photos. While there are less photos, they are arranged very similarly to the sketch with one exception. I flipped the photos. With the direction Drew is facing in the photos, I felt like it looked better with the larger photo on the right and the smaller photos on the left. My title is at the bottom edge of the photos, just like it is on the sketch. The journaling is to the left of the larger photo, just like it is on the sketch. So while all of this may not look exactly like the sketch, you can still see how I took little elements and arrangements from the sketch and used them in the same way. To add a little more extra detail to this design, I added some watercolor splatters to the base pattern paper and a spread of small stars across the layout. I thought the watercolor was a fun and kind of messy addition to the boyish theme and colors. I used mostly black and then added in a few small dots of a dark blue to coordinate with the blue bars in the photos. 
Almost all of the stars were left over from a layout I made long ago with this collection. When I cut small pieces on my silhouette, I always managed to cut way too many, so I always have leftovers. I was glad I saved them because they were just what I needed for this layout. I thought they were an easy and fun addition to the playful theme of the layout. I used foam adhesive for some of them to add a little dimension throughout the design. That's all for this episode of Sketch Support. Don't forget to go grab that free sketch. And if you enjoy using the free sketches, be sure to check out all of the sketches that we have at Scrapbook Generation. We've been making these for over 10 years, so there are a lot available. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.